you wanted to discuss something. How is it that King Radovid's court sorceress and advisor is supporting rebellion in Edirne? This has grown into more than a simple rebellion, Witcher. Prince Stennis's arrival here confirmed Saskia's right to represent Edirne. Saskia isn't fighting for Edirne, but for the Pontar Valley. Even Prince Stennis considers you rebels. He hasn't moved against you because war with Kedwin hangs by a thread. Why are you here, Sorceress of Tretagore? It is my duty. If Henselt occupies the Pontar Valley, Redania and Temeria will respond strongly. The North will disintegrate, its unity gone. A dark scenario that is nevertheless avoidable provided Saskia is successful and wins the Valley's independence. Even if she thwarts Henselt, there will be no independence without agreement from Redania and Temeria. Temeria's expansionist plans melted away with Foltest's death. Redania's ruler is unpredictable, but even he'll have to respect a victory. I'm here to make this victory a fact. Is what they say true? Did Saskia kill a dragon? Prince Stennis decorated her for it at the court in Vengerberg, so it appears to be true. If you want to know the details, talk to Biggerhorn. Apparently he witnessed it. Have you heard about a witcher's school? Apparently the Viper's their sign. No. Why do you ask? The Kingslayer wears a medallion adorned with a Viper. Pretentious and childish for my taste. He can't be very smart. A sorceress like you ought to know bundles about the wild hunt. A sorceress's knowledge has nothing to do with superstitions. The hunt's not a superstition. True. The phenomenon seems to exist. I want to know everything there is to know about it. It's strictly atmospheric. It doesn't interest me. Just as whirlwinds, whirlpools and snowfalls do not interest me. Know how to remove a tattoo? There's a cure for everything, except stupidity. I'll need some green mold, white myrtle petals and wolf's aloe. I'll be back once I've found the ingredients. At the council, you mentioned artifacts were needed to undo the curse. Hmm, but I can't look for them now. I can do that. Why? I have my reasons. Tell me something. What happened here three years ago? Henselt attacked Edern, but met his match. Nobody won that war. Sabrina Glefesig got into a conflict with the Commander-in-Chief of the Kedweni forces, and this led to both armies being routed. Fireballs turned the battlefield into a flaming tomb. Henselt accused Sabrina of using a forbidden weapon. And Sabrina cursed Henselt. I think so. I suspect the curse got out of hand because of the circumstances. Circumstances? The stars weren't right, wrong phase of the moon. There's always an excuse for simple bungling. She placed the curse while burning at the stake. Her hands and feet nailed to a wagon wheel. I'd say she did a good job considering. Did you notice? Not all the ghosts were aggressive. Yes. Most just disappeared when they touched the aura of a living person. I think the curse corrupts the ghosts of the Fallen and turns them into Draugrs. Is that the Witcher's professional name for wraiths? Draugrs are demons of war. They arise at sites of exceptionally vicious, bloody battles. Their bloodlust and hatred in condensed form. Can you kill them by conventional means? A silver sword is enough for a Draugr. But as long as the curse remains active, new ones will arise. The soldier's ghosts are the key. If I could turn the tide of the battle... For that you'll need symbols of war belonging to those who fell in battle. Hatred, death, courage and faith. All artifacts must be magically active and connected to the fallen or they won't lure the ghosts. Right. I'll look around. Finding two will be enough. Get the symbols of hatred and death and leave the rest to me. I'd prefer courage and faith. Don't fuss. I'll see what I can do. Cecil seems to know a lot about the area. Know anything about blood curses? Do you? We're dealing with a fourth level curse, also known as the Curse of the Archmistress. Well, well. I'm impressed. Thing is, until now I thought it was only a myth that such a curse couldn't be cast. 
You thought wrong. There are six confirmed cases of this curse being inflicted. What about confirmed cases of it being lifted? One. Achieved by a team of sorcerers led by Archmistress Francesca Finderbear, hence the curse's other name. Sabrina Glevesig was on the team. Small world. That's not all. The curse investigated by Francesca and Sabrina was designed to end the Tyson dynasty, the rulers of Kovir. They were cursed by Scarlet Rodelega, a complete madman, but very talented. An eclipse and wraiths also accompanied his curse. So Sabrina's curse is just a knockoff Rodelega. Exactly. Can Francesca's experience help us? Certainly. I know the symbols and the workings of the curse thanks to her. Care to explain? I'm the one risking my neck. You'll have to relive the battle and change its course at the right moment. I don't know exactly what will happen. Nobody does. Huh. I'll look for those artifacts. I'm good for now. I'll let you know when I learn something. Cecil, do you know anyone who fought in the war three years ago? I did. 
Did you fight here at Vergen? Of course. Philippa claims you know a bit about the battle. That old kook insult, called king by some, thought that Adernians were bumpkins who'd ship bricks as soon as his troops crossed the river. Why did he attack Edern? According to Hensult, Upper Edern is the ancient legacy of the Kedwini crown and must be returned to the mother country. Brazen farter. That brazen farter had a point. If you read some history, you'll know that 300 years ago this land belonged to Kedwin. Lord of Crab! 700 years ago the elves reigned here, and a million years ago these lands were the domain of the worms. If things worked that way, every king could invade a neighboring land and claim his right to do so because an ancestor took a dump there. All right. Hensel wanted to conquer Upper Edern. What then? He rolled in, got hammered, and rolled out. Cecil, that doesn't help me much. It wasn't a battle. It was a slaughter. If I try speaking of it, I'll see it all again. I don't want... The ghosts of the fallen fight in the mist. They turn into horrible creatures called Draugrs. Edernians, Kedweni, men, elves, and dwarves too. Bloody hell. No peace even after death. I want to help them, but I need to know more about the battle. Very well. Listen. A beautiful day that grew hot later. Very hot. When Vandergrift attacked in the afternoon, he sent the Dun Banner at the fore. Many of our lads shit themselves at the mere sight of their standard. But we had a surprise of our own. Under the cover of night, we prepared fire pits. Our archers lit them up at the right moment. I still can't believe we managed to fool their scouts. If it wasn't for that ambush, we wouldn't be speaking today. They likely wouldn't be in Upper Edern at all. We decimated the Dun Banner, but that was only the beginning. Seltkirk was our commander. Everywhere he appeared, the Kidwenis gave ground. He wreaked havoc among them. Hearts rose at the mere sight of his armor. Then, Vandergrift himself entered the fray. Seltkirk met him in the middle of the field. In the end, Vandergrift killed Seltkirk. A terrible death that sent the Adernian ranks into disarray. I thought it was the end of us. Then the sky fell, as if the stars themselves had decided to avenge the death of a great knight. Fire covered the battlefield. Nobody sought the enemy. They were all looking for somewhere to flee. Yes. There were no more friends and enemies. Only the living and the dead. They say it was the doing of a Kidweni sorceress who wanted revenge on Vandergrift. Could be true, as Henseld had her executed right after the battle. Did you see the duel between Seltkirk and Vandergrift? I stood half a furlong from them. Never seen a fight like it. Probably never will again. They'd already met once, at a jousting tournament in Ard Craig. Selkirk won there. He beat on the visitor so hard he broke his sword. Selkirk was a true knight, the last of his breed. Vandergrift was so pissed off after that tournament he hanged the smith who made his sword and ordered a special one from a sorcerer. I bet he cut down Selkirk with that new sword. Vandergrift is dead. What happened to his sword? Saskia's got it. Good thing, too. Only her hand can tame the hatred enchanted in that sword. After the battle, when the flames abated, the scavengers came. They stole everything. Imagine. Not a single keepsake or Selkirk in the whole of Edon. His brother babbles something about a gauntlet, but he's a lying dog. You saw the Kidwenis cross the river? From afar. I saw Vandergrift leading four thousand heavily armed men. Many a heart sank when we saw the elite bearheads or the armored banners from Ard Kareg. The Dun Banner was in the middle, veterans of Brenna. As soon as he set foot on Adernian land, Vandergrift climbed a hill and surveyed the area, as if it was his fief. Son of a bitch was as sure of himself as ever. Upon spying him, <laughs> I remember the dwarves all dropped their trousers and showed him their asses. Then Selkirk stepped out in front of us. His white armor shone in the sun. We were afraid a kid when the arbalist would shoot him, but they too stood as if frozen. And Selkirk just looked at them and bowed ever so slightly. Remember anything from before the battle? As if it was yesterday. Hensel's troops crossed the Pontar the third day after the autumn equinox. 
Edon had good spies, so we were ready for them, and Selkirk lined up our troops along the hills. Our hearts rose at the sight of the banners of Wengerberg, Aldersburg, and Gullet fluttering in the wind. Knights and armoured infantry side by side in our ranks. Even the peasants had their regiments. The dwarves were on the left flank. Over five thousand strong we were. Nobody caring about race or background, like never before. Only King Demavend was missing. But he must have had more important business than defending his country. You captured the Dunbanner standard? Hensel's choice troops, and not a one survived. The visitor sent them to their deaths, refused to give them reinforcements. He was a monster in human form. The men of the Dun were real swaggerers. Killed a lot of our lads, but for every Dunner, there were seven Adernians. They had no chance. Aye, we captured their standard. We buried what was left of them in the crypts beyond Vergen. Their standard lies with them. Worthy foes are to be respected, even in death. I'm going to need that standard. Thanks, Cecil, that was helpful. I think I know what I need to lift the curse now. Madam Eilhart claims you need four symbols. The standard symbolizes death. Van de Griff's sword stands for hatred. What about the other two? I have a feeling Philippa has a handle on the rest. Here's hoping you're right. How are things? Everyone awaits the battle. Some pray, others drink. Zoltan and Yarpan are chasing peasants around the square. They need a bit of drilling. Yorveth's warriors are trying to be inconspicuous, and so they should. I'd feel better if they crawled up the devil's arse and disappeared. But Saskia thinks we don't stand a chance without them. We killed most of the necrophages. Most? The passage to the lower level collapsed. They won't get out. In time, they'll die off and you can restart work. Thank you, Witcher. The whole of Vergen thanks you. Here's your coin. Shive, Skags, and Zigrim will get the same. Try anything. I'll say it again. Humans are strange. Let's hear it. See, when they're to marry, they become terribly picky. Have to check. You have to bear a wife be plowed.
Try anything, aren't you? They just follow her to war, to death. What do you say to that? It again. Humans are strange. Let's hear it. See, hey! when they're to marry, they become terribly picky. Have to check it. Whether the bride's been ploughed, has a dowry, is diligent.
Okay. Greetings. There goes the PC. Catch something big. <laughs> 